in the unknown, our truest realities. A trio of days revealing, a sight spoken of prior. Prophecy fulfilled with first-hand accounts, the story told. Heavenly beings to humans, an invitation to behold, to go tell, mysteries unravelling, hope abounding. He has risen. A greater content to rest in. We look in places we will not find. Why do you look for the living among the dead? No guard of might or death could seal him there. Where he lay, empty of body, full of resurrection power, a victory and a promise the enemy defeated. With wounds felt, eyes opened, seeing alone not enough to believe. Let the children come, one of his names. A timeless invitation extended. Come and see for yourself a miraculous reality. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to New Life this Easter Sunday. We'd love to invite you to stand to your feet if you're able as we sing. If this is your first time to church, we want you to know that you are absolutely welcome here today. Something we love to do is just sing, sing songs to our Saviour. It's an important day in our faith. Why don't we join together as we sing? In the darkness we were away, without hope, without light, till from heaven you came running, there was mercy in your eyes, to fulfill the law and prophets, to a virgin came the word from a throne of endless glory to a cradle in the dark. Praise the Father, praise the Son, praise the Jesus who was crucified, but He is not here. He has risen just as He said. So come and see the place where He lay. Then go quickly and tell His disciples, He has risen from the dead and is going ahead of you into Galilee. 
There you'll see him now, I have told you. So the woman hurried away from the tomb, afraid yet filled with joy, and ran to tell his disciples. The suddenly Jesus met them. Greetings, he said. They came to him, clasped his feet and worshiped him. Then Jesus said to them, do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. This is the word of the Lord, amen. Come on, we sing. And the morning that you rose, all of heaven held its breath. Till that stone was moved for good, for the land and the Amen. And the dead rose from their tombs, and the angels stood in awe for the souls of all who you may be new to church today and it's our prayer that you would find rest and peace and comfort and safety and security in our Saviour and our Lord Jesus Christ today. You know, this is my wife here and I was thinking during the last service as we sang together that sometimes you might think just because they're up there, people have got it all together. But we don't. We have issues in our family life, we have challenges, we have fears and anxieties. And I want to encourage you today as we sing this beautiful song together, Amazing Grace. I know many of you, all of you will probably know this song. It saved a wretch like me. He saved a wretch like me. This is our song this morning. This is your song today. Why don't we sing together this Easter Sunday, Amazing Grace. Amazing Grace, how sweet.
Heavenly Father, we come to you on this amazing day of Easter Sunday. And we come and we admire and worship your great love that you had for us, that you sent your son Jesus to die a horrible death on Friday, but then give us such a beautiful hope on this Easter Sunday as you rose in resurrection life through the power of His Spirit. And Lord, I pray that today as we gather, may we know this resurrected power. May you fill our hearts with this love and help us to receive it and help us to respond to it today. Lord, to come before you with such praise, such wonder, such awe, that our God is filled with compassion and love and would do this to change the course of history, to give us a hope for eternal life. Lord, what a beautiful gift it is that we receive today. And God, I pray for those of us who perhaps have been walking with you for many years or those who are just slightly intrigued. God, I pray that through your spirit today as we worship, as we gather from uh, all parts of this world, all journeys of life, God, as we come into this place, as we join online, God, I pray that uh, this experience of who you are is made known to us. May we sense your presence as we gather. May we be filled with hope. And Lord, we think about your your global church, our world that is so far from the picture of of perfect that we will one day have in our new heaven and new earth, Lord. And we join with you in that grief of heart where we see such loss, uh, such war, such pain, such suffering. And we pray that today as the church celebrates the hope of the future, I pray that that hope will resound around this world. God, will you give your people courage? Will you fill us with a peace? As we partner with those around the world, Lord, I pray that nothing will get in the way of your name, the name of Jesus being proclaimed. We thank you for the hope we have in you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. Well, good morning, everyone. It is so good to be with you. I would say today on this special, special Easter Sunday, He is risen. He is risen indeed. How about you welcome one another around you and celebrate the good news of Easter. Fantastic. Well, welcome to New Life Online. My name is Ori and I get to be one of the pastors here at New Life Church. And welcome to Easter at New Life come and see and he is risen he is risen indeed just as pastor anna shared with the room a moment ago we're so excited that you're joining us on this very special easter sunday resurrection sunday happy easter to each and every one of you joining us online we've got people coming in from interstate and perhaps even overseas Uh, If you would like to request prayer at any stage throughout the service, please feel free to head to church.nu slash live. That's church.nu slash live. Uh, And you'll be able to hit the request a prayer button um, or you'll be able to interact with our hosts on the chat. If you're on Facebook or YouTube, feel free to drop a comment. Uh, Let us know where you're joining us from and what you're getting up to this Easter. Uh, We'd love to engage with you there as well. Uh, We've got some exciting things even beyond what's so exciting and wonderful and wondrous about today on this Easter Sunday coming up in the life of New Life Church and uh, chief amongst them is Alpha. Now Alpha is this exciting uh, and casual and friendly and safe space where if you, perhaps you're joining us and you're a little bit, oh, I, I don't know, curious about faith or perhaps church is something you do maybe just at Christmas and at Easter time uh, or, or perhaps you've got some big questions that you're throwing around that you're trying to figure out or that you're contemplating, well, we would love to engage with you at Alpha. Uh, there'll be a QR code up on the screen or there'll be a link that I'll throw up in the chat after we finish this cross and you'll be able to register your interest to head along to our next Alpha. Uh, you'll be able to make friends, uh, Uh, joining conversation and tease out questions like, is there more to life than this? Uh, So follow that link and register your details. The team will be in touch with you. uh, And that kicks off on April 16th. April 16th, that'll start. It's an eight week journey. And we'd love uh, to walk alongside you as you explore the ideas of who God is, who Jesus is, uh, what the Bible's all about and what the church is. We'd love to have you along for that. Uh, And uh, alongside Alpha and many of our other ministries and activities that happen in and through the life of New Life, 
Uh, all of those things are so wonderfully and generously supported by your giving and generosity. So we just want to say on this Easter Sunday, the pinnacle of the Christian calendar in a year, uh, that uh, we're so thankful uh, and uh, grateful for your generosity. Uh, if you call New Life home, if you're a part of our uh, regular family here, uh, we'd love to thank you for your continued uh, regular and sacrificial giving that is part of uh, walking a life of discipleship with Jesus. Uh, it's We give because Jesus first uh, gave to us and uh, what better day is there to celebrate that through our generosity than a day like today uh, where we recognise that he is risen and that that tomb is empty and that we get to walk in grace and love with our Lord Jesus Christ. So thank you for your generosity. Uh, there'll be a link on the screen and again I'll pop a link in the chat that will help facilitate that uh, for you as you continue uh, to be generous in your practice uh, and enable and help to facilitate everything that God is doing in and through us as a church. Uh, and so with those things shared and said, uh, I pray that you continue to have a wonderful Easter season, uh, that you would be blessed uh, by the risen King, our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. And, uh, and, and please continue to enjoy uh, the wonderful service that we have coming up. There'll be a, a great message from uh, Reverend Michael Hands. And we've got some creative elements uh, coming up in our worship as well. And there'll even be a baptism, which is this beautiful image and illustration of uh, and, and symbol of, of what it is that has occurred in each and every heart uh, that has chosen to follow God. Uh, the, the going into the waters, uh, symbolic of the death of our Lord Jesus and the rising again, being alive, coming from death into life and being made into a new creation. Um, it's a wonderful thing to celebrate and to witness and so we're really looking forward to those moments coming up in our service. Where am I going in the future? Not much time set aside for why am I here? I think we weren't actually made for this life, we were made for a life beyond this. Is there more to life than this? Some people dream of finding happiness through money. Shopping all the time. Something awakened in me. It was a realization I would never find happiness where I was looking for it. Where's God in all of this? I believe humanity needs to believe in something. Why do bad things happen? What's the deepest human need? Why create the world? We all have different perspectives on the meaning of life. I don't know. There's got to be more to it. I've seen more than that. Alpha is a place where you can be yourself, say what you think, and challenge everything. Each episode unpacks a new topic and gives you time to explore what you think. Try Alpha.
friends, it is finished. Hallelujah, it is done. Would you pray with me? Gracious God, we come before You today with humble expectation. Lord, I know there are people in this room right now. This is their only time in church this year. They've, they've, uh, you maybe, maybe they'll come for a while or maybe it's their first time exploring faith. Lord Jesus, I thank You so much that we're all welcome here. I pray that those who don't yet know You would encounter the living Jesus. I pray for those who this is their regular service, their regular church. Lord God, would You remind us what it means to come alive with the hope of the Gospel again. Lord Jesus, we thank You for today. We thank You for the last 2,000 years, for the resurrection hope won for us in that empty tomb. We thank You that there is hope for the future, purpose for today, and a past that has been washed clean. I pray as we hear from the Word today, would it not return void as it never does? Holy Spirit, would Your will be done in this place? And as always, less of me, more of You. And all God's people said, Amen. Hey, friends, welcome. If you're online, massive welcome to you. If you're in the room, thank you for joining us today. Uh, if you are if trying to find a seat, let me tell you where there is always a seat in church, in the front row. Trust me, everyone's like, where is the seat? You always look backwards. I've had no one next to me the whole morning. A whole morning, friends, come down and join us. It's a great place to be. Hey, why don't you grab yourselves a seat right now? That's amazing. Thank you for those who uh, survived the traffic jam out on Markiri Street. It's a massive anointing for you today, just like a blessing. Uh, I think we could give you a free coffee, maybe, probably not. But hey, have a coffee anyway. Someone on team's like, don't say that, Michael. Um, just test it out, see what you can get. Friends, I'm so excited you could be with us. My name is Michael. I get to be one of the pastors here at New Life. I'm excited because it's Easter Sunday. It's the best Sunday of the whole year. Some people are like, ah, oh, it's, it's not Christmas. You're right, it's not Christmas. It's better than Christmas, friends. It's better. Friends, we actually get a gift that we don't have to return, that we want to keep forever today. 
The other thing that lets you know is that this afternoon at 4 p.m. I'll find myself at Broadwater Parklands worshiping with all the churches on the Gold Coast at our massive East United service. I'd love to see you there. We usually have like a spot on the picnic ground. Once again, I usually choose a spot and everyone sits somewhere else. So wherever they find themselves, I pray you find the New Life crew, not not me, uh, which would be fantastic. Friends, I want to talk to you today about three words. Everyone say three words. Three words can change the world. Three words can change your life. Three words can redirect the course of humanity. It was three words in 1988 that a marketing professional for a struggling shoe company came up with to redirect the course of the whole company. He heard a man who was facing a firing squad of all things. And as this man was facing a firing squad at his last moment of life, he looked down the barrel of the guns and he said, let's do this. This man, I know, right? What gumption. This man, inspired by a man's last words, thought to himself, well, our company is gonna fall apart if we don't do something soon. I'm gonna steal those words, change them. And that, friends, is how Nike came up with their slogan, just do it. Just do it. Three words that has been inspiring athletes ever since and also people who want to look like athletes but just know how to wear shoes ever since to just do it. Three words, friends, 11 years ago delighted the ears of every young boy and girl and horrified the ears of every parent who heard them repeatedly over and over again as they listened to a young blonde Nordic woman in her ice castle sing, Let It Go. Who would like someone to let that song go in Jesus' name? A lot more people in the 10 than the eight. Yeah, it's like a couple, some people down the back are like, really like, yes! The moment for response will be later in the service. Three words can change your life. If you've heard these three words and you're in a romantic relationship, you'll probably know the relationship's not heading where you want it to go. We're just friends. Some of you are nudging the person next to me like, that's us, that's us. You crushed that person. Right now, we're just friends. In 1940, uh, about 1943, Winston Churchill jumped on the radio in the UK and over the country that was facing the invasion of the Nazi army on a small island called Great Britain, he hopped on the radio and he said three words, never give up, never give up. And they didn't and they turned the course of the war. Friends, I hope someone in your life has said these three words to you. I love you. Who would have thought three words would be so powerful? In three words, a life can be changed, a company can be redirected, a whole nation can be saved. In three words, in three words on Good Friday, the intention and plan of heaven was declared. It is finished. And with three words, heaven stamped with a seal over your shame and your guilt that everything that needs to be done has been done. Friends, it is finished in Jesus' name. But here's the problem. What Jesus said on the cross on Friday means nothing if not for Sunday. What Jesus said on the cross on Friday of your sins being forgiven, of the love of God being made heaven to you was just nice platitudes and nice words if not for three words on Sunday. If three words were not uttered on Sunday and if they were not true, friends, it doesn't matter what Jesus did on Good Friday, it was worthless. Nothing more than the good intention of a man who death was stronger than. But in Matthew chapter 28, verse six, we hear three words come to life where the angels say to two women, one woman known as Mary Magdalene, the other woman known as the other Mary. Imagine going down in history as the other Mary. (laughs) Praise God. Which one were you? I was the other Mary. (laughs) What were the words? It were words that when spoken, threatened the end of an empire. Words that defied the very powers of decay and death. Words that said the time for the power of sin has come and it is over. Words that simply declared to the universe, there is now not just a life in this world, there is a life for eternity. Words that whispered have more power than you know. Words said from angels to two women trembling in a tomb, He has risen. And friends, with these words, eternity was forever changed. Do you know the power of these words? These words are not just nice ways we explain to kids why eggs are hollow. 
These words are not just nice ways that we just call each other to get together at Easter time that we might have some fish after church because everyone made an excuse to be in the same building. These words are the reason why this world for the last 2,000 years has seen a movement of love, of justice, a movement of equality, a movement where people have believed that, that the worst thing is not the last thing. And the angels say this, come and see where he lay. And friends, that's the invitation today. Come and see. If Jesus has risen from the dead, He's someone you can come and see. Come and see the one who makes death shake in His boots. Come and see the one who the injustices and the corruption of one of the world's greatest empires pale in comparison to His power. Come and see the one who elevated women and loved all of humanity. Come and see the one who in face of your sin was able to pay enough and still have left over, who declared on Friday, it is finished and on Sunday, I have risen. He didn't say it, but he would have if they asked him. Stephen Hawking, a famous atheist, once said that Christianity is merely a fairy tale for people who are afraid of the dark. He couldn't be more wrong. Christianity is not a fairy tale for people who are afraid of the dark. Christianity is a faith. Jesus Christ is a saviour who no longer, had, who has told me and convinced me that the dark no longer has any power in this world. Friends, I'm not, not afraid of the dark because I believe a fairy tale. I'm not afraid of the darkness in this world anymore because I believe in a risen King. Do you know Him today? Do you know Him? Come and see. Come and see. One of the greatest questions that people often have is how do you know that Jesus rose from the dead? How do you know that this actually happened? And friends, we could spend time today proving the resurrection of Jesus Christ, but I've done that in previous Easter sermons and feel free to go check them out. I mean, I, I know you probably won't, but they're there if you would like them to be. And people far smarter than I, men and women, historians have done deep work on this. But you know what's interesting is when you read the New Testament and the disciples who were persecuted, who were pulled up, who were told to, to give proof for the resurrection of Christ, they never did. Very rarely did a, a, an apostle stand up and go, let me give you the three scientific reasons and the two historical ones around why you can believe in the resurrection of Jesus Christ. They didn't prove the resurrection of Jesus Christ, they just proclaimed it. Because the power of the resurrection, friends, is not in your proof or ability to understand it. It's in the power of the reality that Jesus Christ sits on a throne and by the power of the Holy Spirit can transform your reality today. The world was changed not by 12 guys and, and many women who knew how to talk apologetically about their faith, but men and women who knew how to live in the power of the resurrection every day and their life called other people unto it. These three people, these three people, these many men and women believed three things because of the resurrection of Jesus Christ, that the worst thing is never the last thing, that there is resurrection hope and there is resurrection life. And friends, if I wanna tell you why it matters that Jesus rose physically and bodily from the dead today, it's because the worst thing is not the last thing. Eugene Gabon actually painted one of my favourite paintings. And if you've done Catalyst, which is our Emerging Leader program, I was gonna do a big reveal, but it's up on the screen anyway. <laughs> You're a legend, Matty. <laughs> Eugene painted this painting I've used it before in fact I use it about every six years at Easter time so if you stick around New Life in six years we get to double dip again it'll be a lot of fun I use it at Catalyst we reflect on this as part of our Emerging Leader program and talk about what do you see friends here is one of my favourite paintings of Easter I want to ask you when you look at these two men what do you see look at their faces look at their eyes Look at their hands. What's going on for them? They've just heard a message from the first evangelists, from a group of women who have just seen an empty tomb. And these women have come and told Peter and John, the tomb is empty, he is risen. And John in white and Peter, who's the elder one, they're running. And friends, what is painted on their face? Can I tell you what I see? Can I tell you why I love this painting? I see longing. Could it be true? Because you see, Peter and John, they lived in what we would call an Easter Saturday world. Christ, their hope, their hero, their Saviour, their Messiah had died on Friday. And the reality of Saturday was heavy. Many of you know what an Easter Saturday world is, right? It's a world where 
Things have not turned out the way you wanted them to. Can you imagine how the disciples would have felt waking up on Saturday after the Friday we now call good? I thought he was the one. I gave up my fishing business for this. What are we gonna do now? None of this is how it's meant to be. We know that pain, don't we? We woke up some days, my marriage wasn't meant to be like this. My kids weren't meant to go like that after eating chocolate, that's bizarre. <laughs> the traffic was not meant to be that difficult driving into New Life. I wasn't thinking that cancer would happen to us. I didn't think that I would be this heartbroken, this hopeless, this lonely at this stage of life. Friends, we know what it means to live in an Easter Saturday world. But whilst it was dark on Sunday, women discovered an Easter Sunday truth. And you see it painted on their face, don't you? The hope that it wasn't the end. The hope in these two men that the worst thing, that their Saviour, their friend, their God, their Messiah had not failed. Could it be true? Here you have Peter, whose last thing, the worry in his eyes of having the last thing known about him in history was that he denied Jesus three times. Can you see the hope in his eyes? My worst moment might not have been my last moment. John's face, the one he loved. Maybe I'll see him again. Friends, this is the hope that we can feel, that we can know on Easter Sunday, that the worst thing, friends, is not the last thing. And I know many of you are walking through the worst thing or have walked through the worst thing in your world. And the truth is, is that our world is filled with Easter Saturday realities. But the greatest reason, the greatest thing that Easter Sunday promises to us is the enemy of humanity has been vanquished. We sometimes think the great enemy of humanity is sin, but it is not, friends. The great enemy of humanity is death. Nancy Piercy says it like this, death is the ultimate enemy because it is the final result of sin in this world, the great interruption of God's original plan. Death is the result of sin, but it is such a painful reality that the world is in. Do we not see death play out around us? We see our bodies decay. Some of you woke up this morning and your limbs are not moving like they did yesterday. Praise the Lord, I'm 35. I already feel that pain. Some of you are like, that's pretty young. There are a bunch of kids in this room going, that's very old. <laughs> death is the ultimate enemy because it is actually the playing out of the decision of humanity to live life apart from God. This is why it mattered that Jesus rose. Because friends, if Jesus didn't rise from the dead, none of it matters. In fact, Paul says in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 17, he says this, and if Christ has not been raised, your faith is futile. You are still in your sins. Then those also who have fallen asleep in Christ are lost. If only for this life we have hope in Christ, we of all people must be pitied. What's he saying there? Friends, it doesn't matter how much Jesus says it is finished on Friday. If you didn't rise on Sunday, you're still not forgiven because he paid the punishment for your sins and it wasn't enough. He, he went up against the corruption of the evil in this world and the evil of the Roman Empire and the religious institution won. In fact, Paul goes further and goes, friends, if you're gathered today in a church, on Easter Sunday and Jesus didn't rise from the dead, you should be pitied, which is fair. Why are you here? If this is just a nice story, friends, what are you doing on a Sunday morning? But here's the thing, we don't believe it was just a nice story. Because friends, if Jesus didn't rise from the dead, none of this makes sense. John Updike says it like this, make no mistake, if he rose at all, it was his body. If the cell's disillusion did not reverse, the molecules re-knit, the amino acids rekindle, if none of that happens, the church will fall. What's, what's John saying? He's saying this. Death is not only the enemy of God's purpose, it is the great victory over which Easter Sunday declares for us. N.T. Wright says, death is the enemy of God's purpose and it is our enemy as well. We were not created for death, but for life. And so what Jesus did on Sunday is He painted a fresh image. He says, you think the world around you has told you to live for yourself, that the world around you can give you life, that the world around you has your best intentions and it hasn't worked out. So by dying a death, we should have died and living a life we couldn't live, but rising from the dead, Jesus paints a picture for us of a new humanity. He declares on Friday, it is finished, but on Sunday by rising from the death, but from the dead, he says this, something new has begun and you're invited into it. 
it is not enough for Jesus to just have been raised. Have you ever wondered why when the, the women go to the tomb, they don't get told by the angels, oh, Jesus is in a better place? Because they, they weren't there to comfort them. They weren't told, oh, His Spirit lives in you. How nice is that? They weren't there for something nice. They didn't even say to the women, Jesus is alive. Because it wasn't just enough that Jesus was alive. What did they say? He has risen because He had to die. He had to die to overcome death. See, on Friday, it's like those moments in, the, in those great movies we watch, isn't it? Where the king rides into battle on behalf of his nation. And we're like, yes, the king's going to selflessly sacrifice his, himself on behalf of others. But if the king doesn't return victorious, if the king dies and nothing else happens, then in those movies, we just kind of remember someone's good intentions that had bad outcomes. But if the king comes back from the battle victorious, he's not just remembered for selfless sacrifice, he's known for victorious triumph. The cross, friends, was not just about the forgiveness of sins. The cross and the empty tomb was a declaration that the worst thing humanity can throw at God would not be the last thing. On Friday, Pastor Alex says this great thing, it was beautiful. He says, the cross reminds us of two things, that God suffers with us. That's good news for some of us today, that in your suffering, in your worst thing, God steps in. He doesn't step back. But we also find out that God suffers for us, that in our place, He dies. But here is what Easter Sunday says to us, friends. Suffering is not where the story ends. Suffering is not where the story ends. Why? Because the worst thing is not the last thing. There is a hope that we can cling to today. Then in 1 Corinthians 5 verse 17, it goes on in verse 20, but Christ has indeed raised from the dead the first fruits of those who have been fallen. We miss this great truth about Easter that death couldn't hold Him down. The Roman Empire couldn't win. Jesus' story doesn't finish with the punishment for sin and it doesn't finish with suffering. It is continued in the resurrected life of our risen King and Saviour. He has risen, friends. He has risen indeed. Not only does Easter tell us that the worst thing is not the last thing, it also reminds us that today you might have resurrection life. We fall into this trap, I think, as Christians. And maybe you're new to Christianity today. Let me tell you where we fall into a trap. Some of you are like, oh, I'd love to know where Christians fall into a trap. Well, here is a free uh, answer for you. I think we fall into a trap thinking that Easter is about the forgiveness of sins and or getting into heaven. And we miss this middle part that Jesus cares a lot about. Now, now, Jesus didn't just die for your sins. See, the great narrative of the Bible actually isn't sin. The great narrative of the Bible is a God who wants life for His creation. Sin is a minor narrative of what keeps interrupting God's intention of seeing His world blessed and called back to the fullness of humanity. God wants life and life to the full. Jesus came and said, the enemies come to steal, kill and destroy, but I have come to bring... I've come to bring, didn't get this in the 8 a.m., 10 a.m. special, it's amazing. Come late with traffic, you get more bonus features. It's phenomenal. I've come to bring life and life to the full. What does this look like? It looks like everything changing from the inside out. And to explain this, let me highlight what it meant for the disciples. These disciples, these men and women were very, very dedicated followers. Now, to be honest, the women were the ones that actually stayed with Jesus till the end. But if you look at these 11 disciples at that time and these 11 men and how they acted in comparison in Jesus' last moments, do you wanna know where they were? They were running away. When Jesus was heading to the cross, Peter was denying Him three times. When Jesus was in His moment of greatest need, the disciples deserted Him in fear that they too would be crucified. They too would be imprisoned. They too would be caught up. They were, for lack of a better word, cowards and unstable. So let me ask you this. How does someone go from being a coward and unstable, running away in fear, and nearly all 11, 11 of them in years to come to not only faithfully declaring the Gospel, but many of them dying a death, refusing to recant the Lordship and risen nature of Jesus? What changed? What changed in Thomas? What well, changed in Thomas, who said, I doubt that Jesus has been, is alive and risen. Really. I doubt it. What changed in him that he would then go to suffer a horrible death as a martyr for the faith? 
What changed in Peter, who denied Christ three times and yet was crucified, legend tells us, upside down, refusing to be crucified the same way as Jesus because he would not recant that Jesus Christ had risen from the dead. What shifts in people? Here's what shifts. They actually encounter the living and risen King. And He gives them the Holy Spirit and shifts everything in them. Why? Because Jesus coming back from the dead was a prophetic moment of saying, I don't want life just to be something you experience in heaven. I want you to know life now. Philip Yancey says this. He says that Jesus succeeds in changing a snuffling band of unreliable followers into fearless evangelists. That 11 men who had deserted Him at death now went to martyrs' graves, avowing their faith in a resurrected Christ. That these few witnesses manages, managed to set loose a force that would overcome violent opposition first in Jerusalem and then in Rome. This remarkable sequence of transformation offers the most convincing evidence for the resurrection. What else explains the whiplash change in men known for their cowardice and their instability? Friends, Jesus did not just come to forgive us of sin. Jesus did not just come to raise from the dead and tell us about eternal life. Leonard Ravenhill says it like this, Jesus did not come into the world to make bad men good. He came into the world to make dead men live. Here's the truth in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 1. It says, For you were dead in your trespasses and your sins. We live on the Gold Coast. In case some of you are like, oh, brand new information for me today. We live on the Gold Coast. And the God of the Gold Coast, I believe, is actually lifestyle. We like to look like we have it all together, don't we? If you don't know if that's true, just like rock up at school drop off and just look at how many people look like they've got it all together in that moment. And how many of us know that that's an utter lie. We, 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 we build these images of ourselves, don't we, in our lives where we want to project stability, project success, project wellness, project youth. But what we're doing is what Jesus would call, we're whitewashing tombs. We're making the outside look good when really many of us are dead on the inside. And friends, if you're a follower of Christ, you know what it means to be dead on the inside. And if you aren't a follower of Christ, friends, I, I reckon you know exactly what I'm talking about. It's that this looks great, but this... There's something wrong. The Bible says it's because we've lived for ourselves and we weren't meant to be that way, that we are dead in our trespasses and our sin. But here's the beauty, because at Easter Sunday, the story doesn't stop there. In verse four of Ephesians, it says this, but because of His great love for us, God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ. Even when we were dead in our transgressions, it is by grace you have been saved. Friends, the truth for the Christian is that on the outside, we may be wasting away, but on the inside, we are being renewed day by day by day because the resurrection power that raised Christ Jesus from the dead lives in us. And there are too many of us who are holding out for an eternity that that's when we get to have intimacy and life with God. Followers of Christ, let me tell you now, God wants you to know life today in the middle of suffering, in the middle of pain, in the middle of our Easter Saturday world that you would have an inner hope that the worst thing's not the last thing because Jesus didn't remain dead. That we might have a resurrection life in us. In a couple of moments, early in the service, yeah, in 8 a.m., we baptised a lady named Michelle, beautiful Brazilian woman who'd come to Alpha and she'd given her life to God after a life of partying and chasing stuff for herself. She said, and then I came to Alpha and I discovered the Jesus that I knew I needed. And so in a moment, what happened to Michelle is that we baptised her in this water. If you've ever been to baptisms before, it's your first time in church today. A baptism ultimately means some people here at church to get to go swimming today, <laughs> which could be on offer for you too. Why? Why do they go swimming? Well, because they want to, live out publicly what's happened privately. And Michelle had this beautiful story. I'm gonna hear one from Michelle as well, where Michelle is, she stood in that water in a couple of moments when Michelle stands in that water, two different people. I know you're like, is he saying the same name? Different, um, yes, two different people. When Michelle and Michelle stand in that water, what happens is in that moment they go, I am now dead in my sins. I'm, I, I'm nothing without Christ. And then we'll put them under the water and they'll have to be completely immersed just as Christ was completely immersed by death. They are dying to themselves. And as they come up out of the water, you'll hear this whole room erupt in cheers. Friends online, that's not because they didn't drown. It's because when they come up out of the water, we erupt in cheers because they're declaring, I've been made alive in Christ. And the inner, the inner, there's a victory in here that my outer may not look like, but man, I am alive and I am well. My soul has been set free. Friends, here's the question today. Do you know the resurrection power of Jesus Christ in your life? 
It doesn't look like a lack of pain. It doesn't look like a lack of suffering. It doesn't look like everything going well. It means in the middle of the storm, we know the one who's asleep in the bow of our boat and we trust Him. We trust Him because He went to death and came back with the keys. Friends, there is an Easter Saturday world around us and we are called to be an Easter Sunday people. That is what proves the resurrection, that our lives aren't better. They've been made new and made alive, that we are changed and transformed. Hey, if you are dead inside today, if you are still dead in your sins, there's gonna be an offer in a moment for you to respond to the life-saving gospel of Jesus Christ, that you might know life and life to the full. Do you know life today? Because finally, the gospel... The story of Easter tells us this, that it isn't just the worst thing is the last thing. It's not just that we have a resurrection life. It's that, friends, we have a resurrection hope. Saudi Arabia over the last couple of years has invested $1 billion into anti-aging research. They are investing $1 billion, something like, I'm moving to Saudi Arabia. That sounds great. The reason is, is because they want to hold on as long as they can to the longevity of this life that they might hold on to what they think and believe is good. No, not they, it's true of the world. In fact, across the Western world, there are agencies that will, if you invest $100,000, they'll do in particular specific individual anti-aging research for you about how you can live longer. Why do we wanna live for so long? It's because there is a belief in us that this life is all there is and this is as good as it's gonna get. Now, some of you are sitting there saying, if this is as good as it's gonna get, I'm out. But there are some of you that believe that living on the Gold Coast is as good as it gets. And I'm gonna tell you right now, friends, you've believed a lie because it should and will get better. That this world around us is decaying. It's falling apart. Just not watching the news or jumping off social media doesn't change reality. Our world is, is suffering entropy and death and decay. But until Jesus rose from the dead, that was the direction of us all. But because Christ rose from the dead, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 20 goes on and says this, but Christ has indeed been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. What's Paul saying here? What's he mean by first fruits? He's saying what happened for Jesus 2000 years ago isn't something that you can just experience internally. Friends, one day, one day, we will experience it everywhere. Revelation chapter 21 tells us that the King will come again. His name is Jesus. And when He comes again, He'll institute a new kingdom. Let me tell you about this kingdom. Because He has the keys of death, because He has overcome death, He has defeated the greatest enemy of humanity. He will institute a kingdom of justice. A kingdom, friends, where the Bible tells us there'll be no more tears, no more pain, no more crying, no more suffering, no more cancer, no more anxiety, no more depression that what we long for internally will one day be a physical reality that those who are in Christ will experience. We have a future hope that tells us this life is not all there is, that there is a future reality coming. And friends, we are citizens of a coming kingdom and followers of a coming King who is good, who is loving, who is just and is kind. And the kingdom He institutes will be eternal. It will be good. There will be no more death, suffering, tears or decay. And I'm waiting for that day. Here's what C.S. Lewis would say. If you read history, you will find that the Christians who did the most for the present world were those who thought most of the next. Let me say this again. If you read history, you will find that the Christians who did the most for the present world were those who thought most of the next. What does it mean for Jesus to be first fruits? It means that what happened to Him will happen for everyone who is a follower and believer in Christ Jesus. It will happen for the world. And if we believe that, if we believe that, it simply means that we live now in a way that prophesies the coming kingdom. What does it mean for us to live in a way that changes the world because we believe so much about the one that is to come? Well, friends, let me ask you this. Do you believe God is a God of justice? Then we will be a people of justice because we are living a life that prophesies the coming kingdom, which means wherever there is injustice in this world, there should be Christians with a resurrection hope and a resurrection life saying, this is not the way of God. 
that wherever there is poor, wherever there is the naked, wherever there is the imprisoned, wherever there is the least of these, we say, hey, in God's kingdom, man, there's none of this. So we are going to be here with you, give you dignity, give you life, give you love, give you hope. Why? Oh, let me tell you, because Jesus Christ rose from the dead and it's coming for us all. How good is this? That wherever there is suffering, there is a Christian, there is a follower of Christ binding the wound because we are prophesying the coming kingdom. That's what it means. It doesn't mean that we don't walk through darkness. It means we are no longer afraid of it. Why? John 1, 5, because the light shines in the darkness and the darkness has not overcome it. Friends, you are called to live with a resurrection life and a resurrection power that points to the resurrected King. In the early church, they had this beautiful saying whenever they would meet in the streets because they were persecuted by the likes of, of Nero and Roman emperors and different people throughout history. Whenever two Christians would meet in the street, one of them <coughs> would whisper, just to make sure, and say, hey, uh, he is risen. And the other would reply, he is risen indeed. Because it was a reminder to them both, hey, we're walking through some pretty tough stuff right now. Yeah, I heard Jim and Mary just got imprisoned and, and they, may, uh, they may be martyred for our faith. And man, it's pretty heavy and, and, and things aren't going the way we thought they would. But, but man, hey, just remember, He is risen. Which means the worst the Roman Empire, the worst any empire, the worst any force, power, evil, even sin could throw at us was not enough to keep God down. He will come again. So friends, we say the same today. He is risen. Come on, 8 a.m. We're like running at that. You got to go better. You guys slept in. He is risen. risen This is a revolutionary cry of violent hope breaking through to hopeless darkness, saying He is risen indeed. The world cannot hold down the truth of the Gospel because the grave could not hold down our King. Because He is risen indeed, friends, you and I will rise again and we live with a resurrection power today. Why? Because the worst thing is never the last thing because Jesus is on the throne. Do you know Him today? Do you know Him today? Would you bow your heads and close your eyes with me? I want to pray for two people in this room, not numerically two people. There's a lot more people. I want to pray for two kinds of people in the room. First one I want to pray for is those of you who do not know the resurrection power of Jesus, but you feel something inside. It's like what is dead inside is starting to long and yearn. And that painting I showed you, you that's how you feel every day. You're like, could it be true? And I wanna let you know that there are people all around you right now who live resurrected stories saying it is true. He brings back to life what is dead. And I wanna let you know today, if you don't know Jesus, if you don't follow Jesus, then right now you can know Him, you can respond to Him, you can be made new and alive in Christ by simply saying, I repent of my sins and I believe in the risen King. Friends, if that's you today and you wanna encounter Jesus, know Jesus and follow Jesus, who is risen and on the throne, right now, if you wanna respond to Jesus Christ and know that resurrection life, would you raise your hand wherever you are across this room? Would you raise your hand right now? That's awesome. Keep your hand raised for a moment. Just for a moment, I'm gonna pray for you. Keep your hand raised. Thank you so much. I see your hands. I see your hands. Keep your hand raised. It's awesome. Thank you so much. I see your hand. And online, there'll be someone ready to pray for you if you're responding online. We're gonna pray for you right now. The whole room, every Christian is gonna join in in this prayer because we love it because it was our prayer, it is our prayer. So would you pray after me if you, if you just raise your hands and everyone join in. Dear Jesus, I long to be alive. Forgive me of my sins. Wash me clean. Show me life. Give me life to the full. I choose to follow You, my risen King, my Saviour and my friend. In Jesus' Name, Amen. Amen. Friends, can we join in with heaven and celebrate those who responded to the Gospel? It's awesome. Amazing. We got a gift for you straight after the service. Straight after the service. Friends, what you did today was the beginning. Honestly, if you raise your hands and you've never been baptised, you wanna get baptised, we'll talk to you today about that. We would love to take that journey with you. Would everyone else stand to their feet? I'd love to pray for the second kind of person as we head into worship. Hey, Christian brother and sister, let me ask you this. Are you alive? Are you alive? Some of us have for too long 
been living a life separated from the resurrection life offered to us. And I wonder if it's because we're trying to cling to things that Jesus has called, called us to die to. And I wanna suggest that maybe Jesus can only resurrect that which has first died. That we die to ourselves, that we might be made alive in Him. So I wanna just ask today, those followers of Jesus, do you know the resurrection power? It is on offer today because the Holy Spirit is here. He is the reason you've been saved. May you know the risen King. I wanna pray for us today. Would you open your hands up in front of you? Lord Jesus, as we worship You now, I pray for anyone in this room who calls themselves a follower of Christ and they go, but God, I feel more dead than alive inside. Would You breathe upon the embers of their heart? Would You remind them that their suffering that they're walking through is not the last thing, that Lord, the best thing has happened and is still happening upon them. Resurrection life is ours. May we know it today. And may we live in such a way where justice, where love, where compassion is what we're marked by as prophetic people of a coming kingdom. We pray these things in your mighty name. Friends, stay in this moment of prayer. Let's worship God together. We 
sing hallelujah. We sing hallelujah. We sing hallelujah. The Lamb was overcome. We sing hallelujah. Come on, why don't you lift your hands as you feel comfortable today? We sing hallelujah. We cry worthy is the Lamb. Thank you that it is with conviction that we can sing that the Lamb has overcome. That we can say that you are forever glorified. And Lord, as we witness and contribute to the beautiful celebration and baptism, Lord, I pray that you will restore to us the joy of our own salvation. And I pray that you'll be drawing people into this moment to experience your reviving and refreshing and reinvigorating power in the Spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Would you like to find your seat? We've got this special moment where we get to uh, celebrate and I'm going to welcome up Reverend Brad and uh, Michelle and also Sarah up to the platform with me. Can we give them a huge welcome as they come on up? So exciting. It's been beautiful to see this journey uh, of faith and discipleship and Sarah's been a, a great influence in Michelle's discipleship as well. So it's beautiful that she's up here today. So we do baptism as a, a obedience and instruction from Jesus who instructed us in Matthew 28 to say, uh, all, authority, all authority in heaven and earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded. And lo, I am with you always to the close of the age. So Michelle, why have you come here today? I have come to reaffirm my baptism and ask that the congregation pray for me. Amazing. And today we rejoice that Michelle has come to give witness to the gracious gift of God in salvation and with new faith to commit her life to the service of the Lord and the work of the church. In baptism, we die and are raised to life through the death and resurrection of Christ. We are made members of the family of God and live under the Lordship of Christ. And today, as uh, we've made it so beautifully clear through praise and worship and uh, Michael's word to say that today we do join in Christ's death and resurrection. And this is something that happens uh, personally for Michelle, but it is done in community here. So would you stand as the congregation to uh, stand with her? And there's going to be a response on the screen that says, with God's help, we will. Will you stand with Michelle as she reaffirms her baptism and offer her your friendship? and prayers as she lives out her Christian faith. With God's help, we will. And so through baptism, we enter the covenant which God has established with His people. I invite you, Michelle, now to reaffirm your baptism by responding to God's graciousness towards you, 
by publicly answering these three questions. Michelle, do you repent of your sins? I repent of my sins. Michelle, do you turn to Jesus Christ, who has defeated the power of sin and death and brought us new life? I turn to Christ. Do you commit yourself to God, trusting in Jesus Christ as Saviour and in the Holy Spirit as God's power and presence along the way? I commit myself to God. Amen. Hallelujah. Would you please be seated? I'm going to share a little bit of Michelle's testimony as they make their way over to the tank. Michelle writes this. From my earliest days at primary school, I have always remembered learning about the things of God. It was here where my faith began, and I loved learning about Jesus and his life, death, and resurrection. Through those years, I had my first communion, and later I was confirmed. After school, when I was 19, I joined another church where I became a born-again Christian. But life and motherhood got in the way of my spiritual journey, and I drifted from my faith for a very long time. In the past few months, I've felt God reinvigorate my faith and call me back to Him. God has led me to this church where I have found a welcoming community of faith who have come alongside me and are walking with me in the renewal of my faith journey. So today I have accepted Jesus as my Lord and my Saviour and I have immersed myself in faith. May I emerge from the waters with a renewed spirit and mind and dedication and total obedience to my Heavenly Father. My baptism today marks the new beginning in this transformative journey. I've also discovered that baptism links to salvation. As Jesus declares in John 3, 5, I tell you the truth, unless a person is born of water and of the Spirit, they cannot enter the kingdom of God. And in Romans 6, 3 to 4, Paul says, don't you know that all of us who were baptised into Christ Jesus were baptised into His death? We were therefore buried with Him through baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too may live a new life. That's the life I want to live from today until forever. In Jesus' name, Amen. Thanks be to God. We're going to hold, hold you there. Michelle Leanne Hoffman, we reaffirm your baptism in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Father God, we are so grateful for all you do for us, for all you have done for us and all you will do. Father, I ask your special blessing on Michelle in her act of obedience as she walks out and expresses the new life that you bought for her and that you have planted in her that has been her through, with her through all these years. Lord, that you are turning up the flame. And Father, it may have been a pilot light at times, but it was always there. And Lord, you are turning up the flame in this new season. And we thank you for your grace, your love, precious Saviour and Holy Spirit. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Would you celebrate and stand? And stand if you're able as we declare that forever God is glorified. The ground began to shake. The storm was rolling. Perfect love could not
is our prayer that you leave from this place knowing the resurrected life that we are now called in to live by the power of the Spirit. We pray that as we've gathered here now, we can scatter into our worlds and be a blessing to be the hands and feet of Jesus wherever you are. We hope that we'll see you this afternoon at East United. And then again, next Sunday, as we start off our new series, looking at Psalm 23, we would love to have you there, but go from this place knowing the love of the Father He loved us so much that He sent His Son, Jesus, and we saw in the brutal death, but the resurrection hope that He has now made a way for us for eternity. So go knowing the Father, the Son, and the Spirit, and all God's people said, Amen. Have a great week. We'll see you next time. Well, friends, thank you so much for joining us on this Resurrection Sunday. It's been so wonderful to have you and to host you as we worship God together and celebrated our risen King, our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Uh, We pray that you continue to have a blessed Easter season. Uh, There'll be details in the chat. You can reach us throughout the week. Uh, We'll have a team on hand who would love to connect with you and pray with you if that is something that you would like to engage with. But for now, thank you for joining us. We pray that you have a blessed Easter season and enjoy uh, the time with your family, your friends and your loved one. And we'll see you again next time here at New Life Online. Thank you.